When I first uploaded this, people automatically thought I was in Japan. For some reason, this destination is left out of people's bucket lists. Maybe it's too similar to one or another of the many places that you can visit in this part of the world. So is it going to be worth your while? Welcome to Taiwan. Our Air Asia flight from Manila was a steal at 5,000 pesos for us both. However, aside from this being a red-eye flight, the trains into the city aren't in operation at this time. So we had to spend so much more as we took a cab into the Daan district where our Airbnb was located. Getting up and coming off the red-eye flight, we were feeling a little groggy. But we couldn't keep Taiwan waiting. Good thing we had this lovely terrace to greet us in the morning. Since this is the land of bubble tea, the first order of business was exactly that. We had bubble tea even before having breakfast. And even after breakfast, it was another round of bubble tea. <laughs> we were blown away by the upcoming brown sugar craze that was just about to get started then. Still tired from the red eye, we felt that a power nap after breakfast was best. Sharing here pictures of our place, which is honestly one of the better Airbnbs we've stayed in in terms of comfort. It had trimmings of a very good 3-star hotel. By early afternoon, it was finally time to explore. That means it was time to get our next meal again. <laughs> we found Taiwan's buses easy to use, so it became our primary means to get around on this trip. We found our way into Addiction Aquatic Development. I know it sounds like an ocean museum of sorts, and in a way, it is exactly that. You've got the freshest seafood to take away for home or eat right at the spot. On this trip, we didn't visit any temples as most travelers would, so it's but fitting that we at least visited this temple that is everything seafood. From this afternoon feast of a snack, we continued exploring and made our way into our next dining destination, the Rauhe Night Market. Our first stop was to watch how they make the world famous pork pepper buns, which were baked until crispy. Next on our list was the stinky tofu. Yes, it was stinky, but yes, it was the best thing I had here. Lastly, we had the flame-torched beef. What made this place great was however the experience of being shoulder to shoulder with both locals and tourists, amidst organized chaos that now seemed like a world away. What are you doing? Airbnb said what are the plans? <laughs> You're doing a great job, sweetie! <laughs> it's day two, and on vacation, we're always wanting to move at our own pace, not being pressured by fixed itineraries. We explored the Dan district further before making our way to the Songshan district. We found the Songshan district charming and quaint, but first, coffee. Janessa never misses a chance to have picture-perfect coffee. We were surprised with the way that the Songshan district had the feel of a western city neighborhood. Arts and craft stores and small town cafes along tree-lined streets gave this a sort of Greenwich Village vibe. And despite that western feel, this is where we probably had our best authentically Taiwanese meal. We still don't know what this restaurant is called, but it was enticing enough to make us enter, and man, these were the best Shaolong Baos I've ever had.
day was quickly turning into dusk, and instead of heading back, we decided to get ourselves further lost at Songshan. We found ourselves in a wine bar for a happy hour, and it's interesting to note that places such as these have a one drink per seat minimum. You might want to keep that in mind in case you go bar hopping here. We worked up a bit of an appetite, but we weren't exactly looking for a full meal. We instead opted for barbecue skewers on the street once we got back into the eye. Since this was in 2018, it was actually World Cup season, and we ended the day by watching a match in a random pub with the locals. Though we didn't understand anyone, it was great to feel united with them through sports. So it's our last day in this very quick trip. We were curious to try this hole in the wall just below our Airbnb, which was always crowded with locals. They say in food always follow the crowd and we're definitely glad that we did. This place served authentic Taiwanese breakfast staples such as beef rolls, rice rolls, and onion pancakes that were really good. And after this, of course, coffee. Just another one of the many quaint coffee shops that are aplenty here. Just getting caffeinated for a last minute exploration before going back to the airport for our flight tonight. So is Taiwan worth your while? From Manila, it's always been Hong Kong as the staple quick weekend getaway. But with Taiwan's even cleaner streets, delectable food, on-par shopping, and friendly vibe, it's hard not to see why this shouldn't be the default destination of choice, especially since it's a slightly cheaper alternative. I hope to be back very, very soon.